All right, so it's been a while since I recorded a video, and now that I have this CSR running in VirtualBox, I can bring that into GNS3. I thought, hey, what a better time to record than this. And I'm gonna start off with doing some VPLS. So for a long time in GNS3, it wasn't a big deal to do point-to-point -point pseudo wires over our MPLS. And actually, before I continue talking about RAM, and my poor Mac only has eight gigs to work with, so, uh, if it lags at all, that's why. Um, I'm ordering 16, uh, upgrading it to 16, that way it'll run smoother for future videos. But right now, um, you can see it, it's, running, it's running pretty hot. But um, anyway, so what we're going to do is um, going from previous MPLS pseudo wires that you could do in GNS3, where it's a point to point setup, we're going to turn this into a point to multi point setup. So, um, a point-to-point -point setup would just be that if you want to bridge this fast Ethernet 01 connection on PE2 to fast Ethernet 01 on PE4 using MPLS, that's a pretty simple point-to-point -point pseudo wire. Nothing fancy about that. On a 7200 in GNS3, we've been able to do that for a while. Um, what we haven't been able to do is VPLS, where instead of just doing a point-to-point -point between these two PEs, um, what we'd like to do with VPLS is maybe have a multi-point setup so that CE1, 2, and 3 all appear to be connected to the same virtual private LAN, or to the same private LAN, hence virtual private LAN services. In order to do that, instead of building point-to-point -point pseudo wires between each PE, we're going to build a point-to-point -point pseudo wire on each PE to the CSR in a virtual forwarding instance, and then using a bridge domain that's how we're going to bridge those pseudo wires together. So there's no MPLS configurations on here. I actually had to restart this video, hence why there's st some stuff up on the screen. But the legwork I've done already is just getting um, OSPF running between CSR and all the PEs. You can see again, no MPLS configurations on any of these guys. The CEs. Um, I'll have a loopback interface of 192.168.xx where the X is the router number and their fast Ethernet interfaces are all 192.168.123.x. Again, where X is the router number. So let me get on this guy and on this guy. And it hasn't frozen yet, so let's try and configure this beast. So the first thing we need to do is get MPLS up and running. I'm going to set that up really quick. I think it's big one on here for the CSR, MPLS IP. We'll go on to PE2. I'm actually going to get a new okay, text pad up real quick, just so I can kind of script these in really quick. MPLS, LDP, set the router ID as loopback 0, and on our 7200's fast Ethernet 00 is the MPLS facing interface. So MPLS IP, we'll just paste that into PE2, PE3, and PE4, and we'll see our LDP neighborships come up. Cool. Then on the PEs, we're going to go on to our fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 interfaces. I'm going to do no CDP enable, speed 100, duplex full, and then we'll set an X connect statement. That's to build our point to point pseudo wire. And we'll do X connect. We're going to build it to CSR1. That's 101011 for the loopback. So. 10, 10, 1, 1. We're going to set a, um, a VPN ID is what it's going to be called in the CSR, but on here our, uh, our VC is going to be 1001. We're going to set our NCAP to MPLS. And then we'll exit out. So let's do that on our PEs really quick. Actually, probably should no shut the interface too. Throw that in. All right. Fix my tabs. On PE3 and on PE4. 
All right, so all the PEs now have these point-to-point -point pseudo wires pointing towards the CSR. We can come out of global config. You show show MPLS layer two transport VC one thousand one. We'll see that it's down right now. I'm actually, just gonna go and press enter on my consoles a couple times. <laughs> Sorry, this is going really slow. Okay, and then drop out. Show MPLS. LT transport DC 1001. We see that it's down right now on PE3, and of course it's going to be true on PE2 because we haven't done anything on the CSR yet. So the CSR's config is slightly different. Here we're going to do L2 VFI, which is a virtual forwarding instance. Yes, L2 VFI. We're going to give that a name, or we'll call it just VPLS. It can be anything. It's arbitrary, and we're going to set the signaling type to manual. VPN ID, this is going to be the VC that we assign to our point-to-point -point interfaces, or our point-to-point -point pseudo wires, so 1001. And then we have to put in our neighbors, that's 10, 10, 2, 2 is a loopback of PE2. So that are in to MPLS, and the one command that you have to throw on here, just because they're point-to-point -point pseudo wires coming into this virtual forwarding, in, our virtual forwarding instance, um, it won't actually forward information back out that it receives in the bridge domain unless you turn on no split horizon. Um, I haven't had much time to experiment with using non point to point uh, pseudo wires because unfortunately the 7200s only support point to point pseudo wires. So I can't build these multi point to multi point setups. And I've tried running multiple CSRs. And once I enable MPLS on more than one CSR, um, for lack of a better term, my computer just shits the bed. <laughs> so the only way I can do this right now is using point-to-point -point pseudo wires to a uh, to a VFI. So we'll throw that in. No split horizons, so the information gets forwarded back out to 10.10.2.2, 10.10.3.3, 10.10.4.4, and those are the loopback interfaces of all of our PE devices. Oh, and we're gonna set a bridge domain, and I'll do bridge domain 1001. Doesn't really matter. So I can do show MPLS, L2 transport, VC 1001, and I see that all my pseudo wires are up. And I'll just do it on PE3 and 4. So 3 sees the pseudo wire is up, 4 sees the pseudo wire is up. I can also do a show bridge domain, if I spell bridge correctly. We'll see we're learning some MAC addresses there. Very cool. So here's the big test. If I come over to PE3 and do show IP in brief, I'll do this on the PEs real quick. You'll notice there's no IP address assigned to fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. I just want to be clear about that. Right? On any of my PE devices. All they have on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is that XConnect statement encapsulating frames at layer two and sending them up to CSR1. So what we should get now, assuming that my computer doesn't catch on fire, uh, I should be able to ping all of the fast ethernet interfaces on all the CE devices as though they were just connected by a layer two switch. So I'll start by trying to ping CE2. And ping CE2. All right, can I ping CE3? I can ping CE3. Very cool. And then let's set up some, some routing. We'll do router EIGRP100, no auto. And we'll get all interfaces advertised in there. And so if VPLS is truly working, I should be able to run EIGRP on all my CE devices, completely transparent of this um, provider network that's in blue in the background. So we'll do that. Oh man, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I have EIGRP neighbors running over an MPLS WAN. So then you show IP route, EIGRP. Those loopbacks are in there. Let's try and ping 192.168.2.2. We'll source from loopback 0. Sweet. And 3.3. .3. Sweet. So again, this has been setting up VPLS with GNS3. 
the device that makes this possible is a cloud services router running in um, VirtualBox. Oh, one really important thing um, that you should note too. So when you download the CSR, the C CSR 1000V is free with your CCO account. It's just limited by licensing. Um, you get the universal image on there, and if you download like iOS XE 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, um, if you download the image and then you get it running in VirtualBox, what's going to happen to you is you'll go into Global Config and be like, all right, I want to follow John along. Let's see if you can set up VPLS, and you're going to type MPLS, and it will not be a recognized command. You absolutely have to enable um, evaluation licensing and set it to premium. It's super easy to do. All you have to do is type in from Global Config, license, boot level, premium. That's it. And you would think by looking at the options, because you're going to start off with standard, you would think advanced is what you want. Advanced does not have all the cool features. Premium is your top level license. It'll enable um, MPLS, bi-directional forwarding detection, BFD, all the cool stuff that you want to play with that you can't get to work in GNS3, this stuff is only available with premium license. So you absolutely have to, as soon as you boot your CSR up, set license boot level to premium, write your uh, write mem, and reload your CSR. When it comes back up, you'll have full access to your MPLS features and full access to BFD and other cool stuff that I'll try and cover in future videos. So I hope this has been helpful. You guys have fun labbing.